Well, hello again. Here we are. Sunday, out in the shop. It's a kind of a crappy day today. I think winter has started to, you know, make a little bit of its presence known. So we've had snow, um, kind of snowing now. It's not quite cold enough where I don't think it's going to amount to anything. It's really slushy and wet. So unfortunately, that's not, and there's not really enough out there to go out and play with our toys. So we'll let that alone. Um, so we're out here today. We're getting everything cleaned up, and then our first Toro, our little tin horse, is um, is done and ready for action. We changed the oil on that. Um, went over everything, lubricated it. You know, checked it over. It's good to go. The only thing we we have left to do on that, if we want to do anything, is there's a dent in the hood. Um, maybe we'll try to uh, pop that out if we get a few minutes, but I'm not really worried about it. So that's over on the other side um, in the garage, um, just ready to go. So that can go actually go out and blow snow. Now the next thing up on our agenda is our other wheel horse, the uh, 19 horse, twin. I get that going. But we got a couple issues with that. Um, first up... Um, of course, you know, it's been sitting a long time and it doesn't run. Uh, the biggest thing is the, the hood is all broke on it. Um, I do have see the, the light panel over there. I have all the parts to it, but just the plastic is all busted up. And I um, checked around. These plastic pieces can be replaced, but unfortunately it makes for a $500 hood. And a $500 hood on a $200 tractor, to me, doesn't make any sense. So I think what we'll do is we'll, we're going to take that hood off for now. And I think we'll see if we can get it, we can maybe epoxy it um, back together. And make something out of it that way. And we'll just call it good. Like I say, we got we got the headlight panel over there. So that's what we're going to be doing to that. I don't know how much of this we're going to get into today, to be honest with you. It's... It's cold, it's damp, it's crappy, and I just, I'm not really sure if I'm much in the mood. But anyways, uh, yesterday, I was actually able to go out and um, finish cleaning up most of the leaves on the property, which is good because we get snow today. But after I did that, um, I brought this in. This is my uh, L130 John Deere hydrostatic. This is my primary grass cutting tractor. I have a a 48 inch deck that goes on it and I have a collection system where it bags you know clippings and works really great for leaves. Been vacuuming up the leaves essentially with it, cleaning that up. So that's been great. But seeing that's done and we're moving on, we brought it in yesterday. I took the deck and the collecting system off of it. Um, I mounted up our snowblower uh, on the front, got that all set to go. Um, Put our chains on and our weights in the back so we're good to go so as of right now we've got this available to us and um, we've got our 10 horse available to us our first Toro that we worked on now in full disclosure on our Toro that we did our float repair on um, because we are very transparent here in the shop after that sat for about two days, it started to leak again. And um, checked it out, and there was fuel in the float again. So we're going to call that a fail. Uh, so there must be still a small microscopic hole somewhere in that float, and over time enough gaskets in it that it sinks it. So I went to the local um, Briggs & Stratton, place and I purchased a replacement I bought a new one it was nine dollars um, put it in it's been fine so there you go that one there didn't actually work out as well as we hoped it would but it's fine now and ready to go and for nine bucks yeah I probably should have just done that to begin with so we got that one there the other thing that we did the other day is um, we took a ride about a three hour drive south and went down and uh met up with uh, Harvey Spooner at The Horde. 
and um, spent some time with Harvey. Had a, had a good time. Harvey's a, a good guy. I really enjoyed talking with him. He, he definitely loves showing off all of his stuff, and he does have a, an exceptional amount of stuff. But uh, so we cut loose with uh, two, three tractors and some implements from it. Um, two, two of the Sears Suburbans. Um, we got the, the Hydro Track and uh, another SS12. And um, so I'll go take a quick look at those. Ah. And uh, let's see, we still haven't. I haven't had time to do any more with that one. Um, probably should do something with that. But anyways. So over here, there's our, our tin horse. And this is the, that's the dent um, I was talking about in the front. We gotta see if we can pop that off at some point. But we cleaned it up a little bit and uh, I don't know, it's a good little tractor, I think. We'll see, we'll get some significant snow and we'll see how it works and it works okay and our other stuff is working okay. We'll probably put this one up for sale. Um, there's our, our 133 and back here is uh, four of our Sears tractors. Um, back there in the corner, that's, uh, that's an SS12. Um, it's been repowered with a Kohler. Um, it's got eggs on the back. They were using it for a pulling tractor with a little stack on it, but it's a really nice shape. Um, and I have, I picked up another parts SS12. Pretty much has all the parts to it, to, except for a known good engine. There is an engine on that, but it doesn't feel like it's got a lot of compression to me. Um, to put this one back to original. So I think that'll be an upcoming down the road. Um, this is our six horsepower Sears Custom. Um, that's a good little tractor, very basic. Um, six horse, uh, recoil start, um, but it's all there. It's complete. It's in halfway decent shape. So we'll be we'll be going through this one. Um, both of these tractors have you know. The typical, no, they've been sitting around for a long time, so the carburetors need to be done, fuel systems, and so forth. But I have had both of them running, and they both actually seem to run pretty decent. This is the uh, SS12 that we picked up from Harvey um, the other day. That's a pretty complete tractor. Um, so that will be a, a good one to go through. Um, very few pieces needed on that. The biggest thing that I'm looking at on this one, it looks like Somebody tried to make a John Deere out of it. It's got a John Deere seat. It's got the green paint put on it. So at some point in time, I think somebody wanted a John Deere and they had a Sears, so they tried to do that. But anyways, it's a, it's a pretty good piece. Um, and we'll do something with that. And then until then, it can sit here and be safe and not have any problems. Harvey says that it does run. Um, it just has... Uh, had some issues with the hard start condition. So with all these, before we do anything with them, we'll get them going, we'll ride them around, and we'll see what they are before we tear them all apart. And the other one that we picked up in Harvey is the, the Hydro Track Suburban. And um, this is a real nice, I'm excited about this tractor. This is a real nice piece. It's, uh, it's very complete. I don't think it's actually been used very much at all. Um, it's in good shape and nobody's done anything silly with it. It doesn't look like it's had any of the stuff you find quite often on these. So this will be this will be a good one. This is probably going to get moved. This will be the next tractor after the one I'll show you in a minute. This will be number this is now going to be number two on the schedule. I think we'll go and put this one to number two, and probably that one to, will be number three. And that, of course, that you know the way time goes by, that takes us quite a ways. But I, I really like this one. I appreciate Harvey um, letting it go. We'll do good things with it, and that'll be a nice little show and parade tractor.
when it's all said and done. And the hydro tracks, you don't you don't see that many of those. Most of the ones you see are the the manual shifts. So this is a little unique and a little different. So uh, we'll do good things with that. The other tractor that we got is we got a Case um, 210 from Harvey with a motor that smokes. Um, that one there, you know, Harvey wanted to clean out and it, it was it was a good deal for what it is. So we, we brought it home. I don't really have any plans for that right now. So that's kind of in cold storage at the moment. But that's a pretty complete tractor and I think it could be kind of cool as well. So that's what all these are. And of course all the rest of the John Deere's and stuff, I have a, a back garage and they're all out there. I try not to leave anything outside at all. I try to get it all inside and undercover. So I mentioned the other one is number two. Number one is going to be our 725. In 1965, a uh, Sears Suburban 725. Um, which is very, very remnant of the, the David Bradley tractors of the earlier 60s. Um, this is a real nice one as well. It's very complete. Um, we haven't got, we got to get this one running um, and check it all over. And then this will be the first one that we tear apart and do a nut and bolt restoration on it. We'll go through everything on this. So getting, you know, new tires, paint, mechanically, whatever it needs, everything freshened up. Um, I've already found the replacement decals for it, so and we'll have to do something. It even has the original seat cover on it, which is kind of unusual. So that there will be coming up. Like I say, I don't know how much I'm going to do today. I'm just not in the mood. We went last night. We actually went to Greenwich, New York, where they have an annual Christmas tractor parade. Um, where they take farm tractors in. Um, I didn't get any video of it I should have that was kind of silly but we got you know halfway there and I remember I didn't even have a camera with me and so but what they do to enter a tractor you have to put a minimum of 1,000 Christmas lights on it and if you have a tractor pulling anything behind it of any kind of float or display it has to have 2,000 holiday lights on it so that was really cool um, but it was very very cold sitting in a in a lawn chair on the edge of the street for two and a half hours. So we, I really got chilled last night. I don't think it's really worn off much today because then today this weather rolls in. So anyways, um, that's pretty much all the news that's fit to print here. I've got everything sorted out. So we'll get messing around with this one because I want to get this one because this one has a, a snow thrower as well. I want to get this one going and Get the snow snow blower mounted up on that. We'll see. I this one actually has hydraulics on it. It's got a hydraulic lift, um, and I kind of have some some ideas of maybe I can use something with it's an electric hydraulic pump. Kind of got some ideas of maybe putting them if I can. I don't know how what the capacity or you know ever that is, but. Maybe put some valves on here and put some put some ports for maybe some other hydraulic accessories and that might be kind of cool. So this one here, we may we may keep this one around. Um, we'll see what's what. If we keep this one, we'll probably sell that little uh, LT133 that's next door. Um, that does have a 46 inch mulching deck on it. So next spring that might be a good one to sell. And we'll sell the uh, the little ten horse with the other wheel horse with the blower on it, and then we'll keep this one here. So, but we'll see. That has yet to be determined. Um, the thing I like about these this one here over this one is the deers have the tough torque hydrostatics on them that are just they're not serviceable. If you have any problem with them all, of course you know John Deere basically says that you need to replace it. Although you can go to Tough Torque and you can get all the parts and pieces for them and you can fix them, so that's good. But these, on the other hand, have a very serviceable um, hydro, hydrostatic drive. Um, they have you know separate reservoirs and you can you get all the parts and pieces right from wheel horse easily for them and stuff. So we'll see how that works out. We just, like I say, we gotta get this one going, we gotta see what it is. 
Um, the other thing we got to do is we still have to finish um, outfitting our shop. Um, I think we're going to get an upgraded compressor, uh, a larger capacity, because I want to get a small um, blast cabinet to put in here. I think I'm going to put it over in that corner that's basically accumulated a lot of junk. Um, we'll put that little blast, a small blast cabinet over there. We can do our parts and pieces for these restorations and uh, that'll work out pretty well but we do need to upgrade our um, air to do that we're going to need some more and the other thing that we need to do is we need to get another welder um, we didn't move the welder with us we did sell that so we're going to get that and um, once we get that i've um, got a couple projects in mind the first thing is for these here um, the one thing that we do is our drive of course goes right out to the road it's circular it goes around the other other way as well um, a fairly busy road out there 40 50 mile an hour cars going by so we got to put some lights on whatever it is we're out there doing snow with because if it's in the dark I want to be as visible as possible so I've got some ideas for some warning lights and the other thing we need really too is we need some um, actual lights lights I mean the lights on the tractor you know they work but they're not um, they're not really very they don't light up anything so I've got some ideas I'd like to do some uh, some additional LEDs and we'll make up some kind of a, a system that maybe we can you know use them on multiples or something like that take them off when we want to that type of thing um, so you know if we wanted to you know go out and blow snow with this one we could have them on it and if for whatever reason we wanted to go out and blow snow with that one we could just you know change them over pretty quickly and snap them on without making a, a big deal um, I do have to like I said I have the snow snow thrower for that that's actually over there uh, under all the other stuff um, I think I have all the parts and pieces for it looks like it's pretty complete um, I have wheel weights for the back I do not have chains for it I'm not, I'm not really excited about going, running out and purchasing a set of chains for it just yet we'll, uh, we'll put we get it going we get the blower on there what we'll do is we'll put the uh, we'll put the wheel weights in the back and we'll um, we'll try it and see how it works if, it, if there's a necessity for you know chains we'll get them and uh, or more weight whatever we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it my feeling is is that you know like with the weight that we put on the back of the John Deere and my fat ass in the seat we should be fine so and the other thing that's a difference is this John Deere is a two-stage snow thrower in other words it's got a there's a second impeller I don't know how good the camera's picking that up inside there uh, behind the auger so the auger you know brings the snow in and then the that fan there blows it out that's a two-stage so but both of the wheel horse are single stage basically they just have the auger um, in the front and that spins at a little bit higher rpm and throws it out the stack so we'll get a little good comparison on the differences on those and how they work I mean it, conventional wisdom would say that you would think the the two stage would be a, a better setup but we'll find out I mean it's not necessarily always the case but we'll, I think we're going to take the hood off this and set that aside for now so it doesn't get busted any worse um, and we'll see what we can do about putting that back together and uh, we got to get this thing running um, I did pull it off I don't know if we need to do some carburetor finagling with this or not. But once we get the hood off, that'll be a lot more accessible. This is a V-twin. Biggest thing we got to do is we got to take these covers off. And we got to see what's up with our friend, friendly mouse that has done something in there. For Mice just love to move into these things. I don't know what it is, but... We cleaned the, cleaned the mouse nest out of the other one, and now we got this one here to deal with, too. Of course, they did sit in a hay barn, so. 
pretty uh, understandable, I guess. So anyways, today is the end of the Sprint Cup race to the chase, so we'll have to go in and you know park ourselves in front of the television and stare at that this afternoon. So I don't think, like I say, I don't think I'm going to put the heat on and warm this up and get into anything anything out here. I think I'll just uh, call this good. I'm going to go in, I'm going to I got a little bit of slushy snow to shovel off the walk and I go inside and call this a day. So uh, then maybe tomorrow we'll be back out here. It all depends how we how we feel. You know, we had a we had a long day when we went down to Harvey. Uh, I'm not complaining about that at all because like I said that was great. But um, that and then yesterday we did quite a lot yesterday and I just whenever I do that it takes me a couple of days to get back feeling where I want to go out and do stuff again so so maybe tomorrow we'll go out but we come out today and we, we picked up around here picked up in the shop and some stuff and most importantly you know we drove off and got a big cup of Dunkin Donuts coffee this morning so life is good right all you need is Dunkin Donuts so anyways that's it for today um, and I want I really want to put a thanks out there for all the people my uh, we got a Big influx of uh, new subscribers um, after our visit to Harvey. Um, and anyway, I thank him for that. He promoted us very nicely. It was very nice of him to do that. And um, so hopefully we'll get some content up here that keeps you know all the new people that have come on and the old people too, as well interested in the channel. And we'll keep doing our thing. Of course, you know Har I think Harvey he said it. And he's exactly right. That you no know, more interest there is in a channel, the more interest there is to doing stuff for it. So. That's good, um, but I want to thank everybody that's come aboard. Um, I appreciate all subscriptions. I definitely, I love the comments, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I love to have it, have people comment on videos. Um, and yeah, and we'll uh, we'll continue on and see what we can do. So until the next time that we meet, as always, take it easy. We'll see you.